Hey guys, it's Damien again uh, from Marketing Food Online. I've got a response actually to a question from one of my subscribers um, that was asking about how to start a candy business from home. Um, and she's looking to sell online. So uh, just to clarify really quick, and what I'll do is I'll go over the, the, the guidelines of what you can and can't do from your home and then compare that to a facility that is commercially licensed that has different type of licensing that would allow you to go online to sell, okay? So um, I believe the video that she was, she was actually looking at was our Etsy video, um, and she was looking to sell products from home. Now, if you are starting a food business or candy business and you are at home, that would actually fall under the Cottage Kitchen Food Laws. Um, most of the states across the United States have relatively similar laws in the sense that um, if you're dealing with a home-based business, um, most of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, I would say um, you have to sell those products locally. You would actually personally have to deliver them to your customer or you can have them come to your home um, and pick up the products. If you're comfortable doing that, that is something that's an option for you. Um, if you're at, your, you're at your home and you get a, a certificate, you get uh, certified to have a cottage kitchen within your home, um, there are some states, and it depends upon if you have a separate facility, a physical kitchen that is on your property, but it's not actually within the home itself. In some situations, you can sell, um, you can get a commercial license to get a commercial kitchen, and you can then begin to sell online, okay? Those are very limited in, in where they are. Um, I would have to do a video actually specifically on the certain states that would allow that. But in general terms across the board, um, cottage kitchens are, uh, are able to produce food products, but you have to sell them at farmer's markets, festivals, uh, you know, flea markets even, or roadside stands, um, or basically just locally, okay? Now, if you're in a commercial setting, if you're in a commercial kitchen, that is a different type of business altogether. And the type of licensing that you will have for that um, in many, many, many cases will basically allow you to, your, since you're a commercial facility, allow you to sell online and to sell to whomever you want <coughs> across the United States. Now, now, I wouldn't discourage you, discourage you, though, if you are just starting out and you are at home and you have some recipes that you are uh, uh, finalizing or perfecting certain recipes and um, you want to sell the product, I would actually recommend that even if you could um, go online and sell them, I would say start local and start small because you need to kind of get experience interacting with customers um, with how to handle uh, customer situations or um, how to just start a business on a much smaller scale. When you jump online, just from experience, I would highly recommend that you kind of get a taste, uh, no pun intended, but get a taste for a smaller business setting um, and doing that kind of a locally uh, with, with festivals and flea markets and stuff. Um, that way you can kind of get a feel for also um, whether your products will go over well online. Uh, the only th the one thing about that statement is that the thing is when you go when you go to begin to sell your products locally okay you're going to get a local um, kind of a taste a feel for local people's tastes uh, which is very different than uh, being available online where the entire country or the world has an opportunity to taste your products uh, because it's a much bigger uh, pool of customers you know what I mean so if you've got a local you're in a certain demographic or certain area of the country and you know this specific candy sells great locally but it may not necessarily transcribe over into selling nationally or even internationally so i'm going to go over a couple of really quick tips first off you want to uh, kind of think small i'm sorry you want to think big but um start small okay so nothing there's nothing wrong with starting small and starting local okay just keep in mind that, hey, you know what, your end goal, your, your, uh, your big dream is actually to be online, is to be in front of the entire country or the world. That's the goal. So that would motivate you to continue to focus locally on what you're doing, perfect your recipes, perfect your packaging, your labeling, everything that goes into it before you make the big jump and go online. Now, um, there are a lot of sellers that I've seen. Actually, there's a lot of people who run, operate um, home-based businesses like on Etsy, and on eBay and on Amazon, um, not necessarily on Amazon, but on eBay and Etsy, that sell other types of products. Now, when it, when it comes to food, it's kind of a different, uh, it's a different type of niche, okay? Um, and the reason why I say that is food production is much different than starting a jewelry company from your home where you're not producing a product that could be potentially hazardous, okay? 
because if it's not actually produced properly or if it's not made properly or it follows the guidelines of cottage kitchen production, um, somebody could get sick, okay? Um, normally, people who wear jewelry don't necessarily get sick from wearing a jewelry, you know what I mean? So when it comes to a food business, it's a little more trickier, uh, but it's not something that can't be done. You just need to understand what's expected um, in a cottage food setting and then what would be expected in a commercial setting because they're two different worlds, okay? Your kitchen, everything about your kitchen is set up differently. Everything about what you're going to offer and how you make it and produce it is totally different, okay? So start small, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, fairs, festivals, okay? Um, roadside stands. Um, even, even, believe it or not, a great place to move a lot of product and doing it locally, believe it or not, is actually at a lot of sporting events. Um, if it happens to be a high school or college or even an elementary or something uh, local like a soccer, the, during soccer season or local football season or baseball, there's a lot of concessions, okay? Keep that in mind. There's a lot of concessions in these places and there's nothing wrong with contacting the, uh, the Parks and Recreation Department or find out from the USDA in your community to see if those areas are places that you can actually take your product to, okay? Um, and a lot of places they do, they allow you to do that. Um, the great places are farmer's markets, okay? And again, it's just to get the opportunity to a get experience with packaging, labeling, uh, people's feedback, you know, um, ask your customers as you begin to sell them, hey, what do you think of my product? And get some feedback from the people who are around you locally and then take the leap into something that's more commercially licensed and then much bigger online and so on. So can you do it from your home? Yes. Can you make a good amount of money every year doing it on the side or starting? Yes, most certainly. In the state of Florida, I did a video about Florida. They actually now raise the limit from $15,000 to $50,000 a year. And to be honest with you, if you're doing it on, you know, as a part-time thing or on the side, an extra fifty grand a year is actually not that bad. So... Um, Take a look at that first. Again, check locally. Find out specifically in your community, uh, your municipality, your county, your city. Understand this also, that every state has cottage kitchen laws, okay, on the state level. There's also federal guidelines for having a home-based food business when it comes to also what the uh, FDA will expect from your labeling. So there's a lot of different plateaus that you got to be aware of. And then when you get from the state, you're going to get down to the county and the city and uh, local municipalities, okay? Because they can also set rules and guidelines. They're allowed to do that on a lower level. So just be aware of what's expected and what they ask for. And it's, it's not as difficult as it may sound. It's not that overwhelming. <clears throat> just want to be sure that you're asking the right questions and simply tell them, hey, you know what? If you're looking to start a business, hey, you go down to your local zoning and planning office or your health department, again, whatever that may be in your county and your district, Ask them, hey, I want to do this. What is it that I need to do to make this happen? Very, very simple. They're going to direct you in the right direction. They're going to say, hey, you can do that and this and this, but you can't do that. So try that out and figure out what would best fit your circumstances and situation. And then from there, take the next leap and get into either renting a commercial kitchen, opening a commercial kitchen, or building out a commercial kitchen where you can get yourself licensed uh, to sell to pretty much anybody. Okay, so that is my recommendation. I would highly recommend you do that and just take it one step at a time and don't get overwhelmed. Um, the business that I have here now has taken me nearly 10 years to build um, and we have now been very, very successful doing what we do, but it did not happen overnight. It's not a get rich scheme. Um, what I do with the food is actually something that I actually love to do um, and it's been my passion since I started doing this. So my videos is just another extension of that uh, passion for food and I'm trying to just simply help out anybody and everyone that I can. So if you need more also one-on-one -on -one advice, if you're looking for something more in, involved with me as far as consulting or some more advice in package design, labeling, what's expected, how to open a commercial kitchen, start a business online, um, any of that. That's all of that stuff I have experience doing. My uh, second channel, Marketing Food Online 2, um, it's $12.99 a month. I make it very, very inexpensive for you to participate in that. And it's actually another channel that once you have subscribed to that, you have one-on-one -on -one email consulting access to me. So uh, check that channel out. If you'd like to subscribe to it, you got actually two weeks uh, free as well. The first two weeks are uh, on YouTube uh, free of charge. And then there's also some other resources that are on that channel too. Thanks, guys.